It's been my experience that if you give little girls tools, they will grow up to be engineers. And now I have a bonus that they give their dad mill tooling for Christmas. This is a boring set from Amazon. It's the cheap one. It's an MT3. Never bought one of these before because I didn't really need it, but now I have some applications I like to use for it. And it's always been a concern that my mill, which only has a 10 inch, 10 and 3 8 inch, I think, gap between the spindle nose and the table, and it is not a movable head. Uh, there's going to be very little uh, work area that I can actually use it in, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm sure I will be able to make use of this thing. So it comes in this uh, plastic box, very tough, but also very space using. We have some Allen keys and a variety of uh, boring heads in different lengths and it looks like different shaft sizes. So these are going to be useful for different uh, applications, smaller and bigger and longer. Uh, but we'll see if we're able to actually do the long one. Uh, Let's get a knife. So we have, what does it say here? It says MT3, 7 eighths, 20, 3 eighths by 16. So it's got a 3 eighths by 16 drawbar, which is nice because that's what I have in the machine. I do have some MT3 tooling with a 12 millimeter thread and it's a pain in the ass. So that's for one of my collet chucks. I probably need to replace that or make an adapter. It's uh, imperial sizes. Uh, it says it's a two inch head. So that is our boring head. So the question is how much space do we have once we install the thing, put in the vise, uh, put in the bit, how much actual working uh, envelope do we have left? Please ignore the Dalek in the background. He's just hanging laundry just now. He is inert and perfectly safe at this time, as far as I know. Oh, this actually comes loose. So that, I guess it tightens as it goes, but that wants to be tightened up. There's no grippiness on that. So that's something to watch out for. Never run this backwards. Um, so here's our measurement we have 10 3 8 to the spindle nose when it's almost all the way up i always leave 20 thou for uh, over on the on the cnc i give it the uh, 20 thou before the hard stop and when we stick it in we are left with can you see that we can see that we're left with, it looks like seven and a half inches exactly. Uh, and our tools, this is our longest tool. And this is our shortest tool. And that does not go in the hole. Why does that not go in the hole? It's covered in shipping plastic. Okay. So that's a good sign. These are well packed. There's no sign of any corrosion. Uh, which you might get on a long boat from China. Uh, they're very well packed. All the stuff I bought recently that's made in China has actually been very good for me, quality. Obviously, it's not uh, the best grade, but in terms of hobby grade stuff, uh, stuff I used to buy 10, 20 years ago was often you know, rusty, full of grit, all this kind of stuff. And the new stuff has been, I'd say it's been better. I'd say it's been definitely better quality than I used to get. And, and certainly good enough for, for hobby use. So we'll give this a zero oily. They're oily under the plastic. So there's no way these are going to get rusted in transit. So they put a little bit of investment into the packing and shipping. So we stick that smallest one in and we have, uh, I'm not tightening up, we've got about six and a quarter and we put the longest one in 
we've got uh, four inches. We've got four inches clearance there. So if we take our vise, so this is again, this is a standard four inch curtain knockoff vise. The most obvious with this kind of machine are going to be using. We'll bring it over to where the vise jaws are. Uh, we have, I need a shorter rule now, we have three and one eighth inch to the nose of the, the machine and we put in a boring bar, we are down to two and a half inches there. On the shortest one, and ooh, that's interesting. Uh, we are down to one quarter of an inch there, but obviously you would never need a boring bar this long if your work is only this short. But uh, if we were out to the side, we might be doing something longer. So anything longer is going to have to go mounted to the table. If you are a person who likes the rotating base, if you have the rotating base for your vise, which I never use, you lose some more height. If you remember how this goes off. Now we're getting down to really small clearances. So if you have your rotating base, you're gonna have not even have room for the rule here. Two and three eighths. With that, and with your shortest boring tool, uh, hands in the way of the camera. Sorry about that. Uh, we're at. About one and a quarter with that one. So that's your limitations on your throw. I have, uh, I think, th three inches of, of travel. I think it's three and one eighth inch travel on the stroke of this, uh, this thing. So that is the longest shank boring bar is about three inches. So I could fully utilize this boring bar as long as the job is far enough down. If you have a, a, another kind of 3-in-1 with a movable head that goes up and down, you obviously have a lot more flexibility. Uh, but if you've got this kind of machine or you don't want to move your head, uh, that's the kind of variation you have uh, with this. These seem to come in four lengths with uh, two diameters, thin ones and thick ones. And do they all come in four lengths? No. There's a variation of these. So there's your shortest one, is going to give you about a maximum 5 eighths depth, and your longest one is going to give you about 3 inches, uh, less than 3 inches, about 2 and uh, two and 7 eighths maybe. So I look forward to trying to use this. I'll see if I can uh, set something up and do a test uh, bore uh, for the end of the video. But this is really just to give an idea of if you are buying one of these for your three-in-one machine and you have limited head uh, movement, is this gonna fit? And I think this is gonna be usable. It's not gonna have, uh, you're gonna have the usual juggling of mounting the job, mounting the, the head uh, and so forth, picking with the right tool, maybe even making alternate tools to uh, get the job done just because of the limited work envelope. So I am able to get my uh, centering stuff done here. Get the dial gauge in. 
find my center. So there's room for that. That's good. And it fits up here. There are no alignment marks for the tools here, so uh, not, I probably need to learn what the proper process here is, but lining it up by eye, that looks square to the shaft, because you, as you move this out, that's the, obviously if you have it back to front, it's not going to work. So you want to have it at the right angle, and there is no alignment mark on the tools. So that's a skill to be learned. And, and yeah, that's the Allen key for that one. Okay. So there's three different sizes of Allen keys here, and I'm finding figuring out which one to use in each instance is a bit annoying. Now there's There's three for tightening here. What's that? Get that out and take the touch off. We're touching off there. Take that one, and then we take the small one to tighten the three. I guess they're Gibbs. And figure out our speed feeds and speeds. So the online calculator for single point turning with high-speed steel, and this is actually carbide, is for 0.65 inch, is, it says 3000 RPM, which is as fast as the machine will go, presumably if I give it a faster speed, it's even faster. I'm not gonna do that, my first try. I'm gonna go 600 RPM, which is what the machine is set to just now, which seems a lot more sane, because um, there's a lot of rotating mass here. I've never used this before. Who knows if it'll fly apart. So we'll uh, turn it on, see what happens. And then... Manually feeding. Well, it cuts, it works, this is cool. I'm gonna move this uh, parallel out a little bit. And we'll try a slightly deeper cut. So in theory, uh, so every one of those is a thousandth of an inch. So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to untighten, untighten, yes, loosen these every time because this obviously locks it in place but it seems like a wise thing to do and it currently says 36 uh, now is this moving out by diameter or by radius that's a good question probably I should read the instructions This is currently reading about 719. So if I turn this 10, 
It will either take me to 729 or 739. So it says 36 just now. And I guess I got the thing in the wrong way. Yes, I'm going the wrong way. So I turn it to, what was it, 3 6? Now it's at 2 6. Tighten these back up. And that does. Okay, so the trick is I have the blade here pointing away from the adjuster knob. If I have it towards the adjuster knob, then turning it clockwise makes things bigger. I've got it back to front. It still functions, but the math is all wrong. And we are now at approximate, this is very approximately... We were going to be at either 7.3 or uh, we were at 7.19, now we're at 3.2. So moving it 10 has changed the diameter 20. So this is a, this is a radius, apparently. And if that's true, uh, to bring it all the way to 0 0.75, from 7.35 we need to go... 15 thou, so we should move it seven and a half. So let's try that. And we're currently at about two six. So if we move it down, because we're Back to front. We move it six to twenty. Seven and a half. That should bring us to point seven five. Let's see if that works. Turn on the power. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, that will take some practice, but it does work. This is a functional tool for this machine. Excellent.